Hey everyone, today we're gonna talk about the retractable landing gear on the Dark Arrow One. More specifically, how we take three tiny motors like this and get them to move our gear struts up and down. Previously, we've demonstrated moving just one strut using an electric motor, but we've not yet shown a complete overview of how this entire system is controlled when you add in all three struts. In this video, we'll do a full retract and extend of the gear, but there's a lot more to it than just going up and down. We'll explain more of the system details and some of the cool features of our design. As we've mentioned in previous videos, the landing gear on the Dark Air One are electrically driven using an electric motor and a gearbox on each strut to move the gear up and down. Each strut also has a lock mechanism at either end of travel. This lock needs to be fully disengaged before the retract motors can be driven. Besides disengaging the lock mechanism, we also want to have control of the speed of the gear as they retract and extend. We want them to retract and extend quickly, but we also want them to slow down to avoid violently hitting their ends of travel. This combination of requirements that I just outlined imply that our retract control system would need to go beyond just a simple forward and reverse functionality which led us to add some logic boards and motor speed controllers. To show you what this all looks like, let's jump over to the marker board and draw this out. This is an early version of the retract system in the Dark Arrow One. With the addition of our logic control, we can disengage each gear lock and sequence this so that the retract motors drive only when their gear lock is fully disengaged. The logic control can also be used to speed up and slow down our gear struts before reaching their ends of travel. Looking at the system, we have something that will meet our requirements for controlling the motion of our landing gear. One challenge of any retractable gear system is the implementation of what we've drawn here. Whether the retract system uses a single control board and several motors, a hydraulic system with multiple actuators, or a central motor with mechanical linkages, you'll need some kind of system to make your gear struts go up and down. This will mean managing a network of wires, hoses, or linkages throughout the plane. On top of this, you also need to relay the up, down, or unknown status of the gear struts back to the pilot. Our approach with the Dark Air One prototype was to make this gear control network modular by breaking up the central logic board and placing one in the instrument panel and pairing one with each of our gear struts. The result is a system that uses just two wires running throughout the plane that allows our instrument panel to tell each gear strut when to move and for each gear strut to communicate to the panel what their up, down, or unknown status is. The technical name for this setup is a CAN bus network and it is fairly common within the automotive industry. Outside of needing two wire CAN bus for communication, each retract module just needs a connection to power and ground. This type of setup will make it easier to upgrade and service our system as the prototype evolves. One other point I'd like to mention about retractable landing gear is the concern that the pilot may forget to put the gear down on landing. Having logic paired with the gear makes it possible to use inputs like airspeed, distance above ground, and engine RPM in order to automatically deploy the gear and prevent this gear up scenario. We'll save auto extending the gear for another video, but for now, let's take a look at how this all works today by running the gear up and down. We have the airplane here lifted off the ground for retract testing. The carts that it's sitting on were specifically designed for these retract tests so that we could move the gear through their full paces without interfering with the carts. In front of me, we have the electrical system and the instrument panel pulled out of the plane for this test. The gear lights show us that each strut is in the down and locked position as indicated by the three green lights. One caveat with this test is that we actually don't have the locking mechanisms in place as we're still in the process of installing these. With all that said, why don't I flip the gear switch up so we can see how this all looks. All right, let's walk through what we just saw. When I moved the gear switch from the down to the up position, the retract motors began to ramp up in speed and the indicator lights transitioned from green to red, meaning that the gear were in transit. As each of the gear struts began to reach their final positions, they started to slow down in the last portion of travel using feedback from their motors to determine their relative positions. Once the gear were at their fully retracted positions, the gear indicator lights transitioned from red to off. If for any reason a gear strut were to come out of place in flight, this would be shown by its gear indicator light transitioning from off to red. You can see that the gear are all happily at their fully retracted positions as indicated by each of our indicator lights being off. To complete this test, let's return the gear to their fully down positions 
And in this case, the gear indicator lights are going to reverse what we saw before, going from off to red or in transit. And then once all the gear are at their fully down positions, we should see these lights go from red to green again. All right, all three of our struts are down again, as indicated by our gear indicator lights being all green, which would mean we'd be good to land. You'll notice that this time around, they moved a little quicker going down, and that's just because we had gravity working in our favor. As we ran this test, the total amount of power that our retract system drew was only around 100 watts. One thing that is counterintuitive about retractable landing gear is the surprisingly small amount of power required to accomplish the retract motion. Everyone is familiar with a 100 watt light bulb, but what does 100 watts feel like? If you hop on a bicycle and pedal lightly, that is roughly 100 watts. In the RC world, many 100 watt motors exist that are about the size of a walnut. That begs the question, why not use electric actuation and a gearbox on all landing gear systems then? The reason is that at a certain size, hydraulic systems really start to shine in terms of power and weight. Little RC planes have retractable landing gear that are exclusively electric, but when you look at large airplanes like military aircraft and cargo planes, basically everything is hydraulic. There exists a size somewhere between the toy airplanes and the giant airplanes where the favorability of hydraulic versus electric starts to blur. And the darker one exists in this blurred realm between electric and hydraulic, but it's still probably closer to where electric makes the most sense. Coming up with optimized solutions to technical problems is something that we're constantly doing here with the Dark Arrow One, but it's something that we also do through our engineering services. If you're interested in working with us as well, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can learn more about these services. So what's next for the Retrack system? We'll soon be moving on to installing the lock actuators that I mentioned earlier, as well as running additional tests on our emergency extend system. We've already begun testing these systems little by little, but we'll save that for a future video. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Time.